On this episode, Boop is a scriptable scratchpad for developers. Avi can easily generate avatars from images. Flatsil can manage more Flatpak permissions than GNOME settings. Calendar is preparing for an adaptive mode. Oh, and four more apps. Boop for GNOME is a clone of Boop for Mac OS, and GTK does a very good job imitating Coco Toolkit, which is obviously a great benefit for me. In a nutshell, Boop is a place to paste text and transform it using basic operations. The goal is to allow quick experimentation and avoid using random websites to do that stuff. It's super useful when working with logs, JSON data etc. Another nice capability is that it's very keyboard friendly, so we can operate very fast without using mouse. And if the built-in operations aren't enough for us, we can easily extend it with JavaScript scripts, that are compatible with the original Boob app. All we need is a manifest file, and a JavaScript function that gets the input of the editor, and from there you can return whatever you want. Identity can open two or more image or video files, and play them at the same time, so we can easily compare the differences. At the moment can't do split screen so we can watch both videos simultaneously, but I guess that's something to arrive. But what I'd really like to have here, is anime intelligence that automatically spots the differences, and telling us what's the best. Avi is an application that let us quickly generate avatars from images. The main functionality is images cropping, but Avi can do much more from her menu. We can flip the image, or we can even change the orientation and we can still crop. There are also some image filters like sharpen and grayscale. And we can export to a rounded PNG too. Flatseal is a permission manager for Flatpak apps, and while GNOME settings has similar features, Flatseal can be still useful. For start it will only display our Flatpak apps and not everything, and by the way I love it also displays the runtimes. It also exposes more permissions than GNOME Settings app. And another nice thing is we can edit the environment permissions, and easily reset everything back. One thing it can't do and I'd like to have, would be a filtering per Flatpak repo and installation space, user or system. Blanket is one of these apps that help us to sleep with the relaxing sounds of nature. And it has an amazing implementation. Take a listen. Oh, and it has a handy pause. But it doesn't stop there. We can run the app in the background. Plus it has its very own equalizer. Pretty pretty neat implementation. Kamuku is one of my favorite GNOME apps, and the reason you see an empty library is because I have a new installation, and Kamuku unfortunately doesn't have a sync. So what's new on version 0.20, is that on search we have some filters. And when we enable something, we also get this orange arrow. That I'd prefer to be a different color. Kubrick is a proof of concept that I can fit more than Gil maps on these series. But Kubrick is also supposed to be a game, but with these menus perhaps it is losing the original scope. And that also applies in Gil games, although GTK at least looks a bit more playful. Interface aside, the movement of the cube is extremely laggy which makes it very annoying to actually play. Which is a shame because it could have been a really nice game. Calendar app update dependencies to Levandy 1, and also the header bar was ported from GTK to Handy. Although it hasn't a responsive mode, just yet. There is more work done, but that last change was in one liner patch. Important thing is that hopefully by GNOME 40 release we will get a calendar for phones, or anyway, a calendar that can scale better if you use a tiling manager or something. So that was everything. And if you want to keep these series alive, please share and comments the apps and the apps updates you want other people to know about. There are only three simple rules before. First the app should be a Linux desktop app, and not things like Kaden Live or Blender etc. Second, the app should have active development. And last but not least, the apps should be available on Flatpak, otherwise I won't be even able to try them. So, thank you for watching and without your support this channel would be not even possible. And anyway, all the usual craps.